all things nuts. And they'll reset Nowitzki again for the lead. What's going on, Maverick fans? Welcome into yet another All Things Mavs podcast. It's been a little inconsistent lately. This last week got super, super busy, but I promise I'm going to get as many podcasts to y'all as possible because I love doing these, um, and I feel like I've gotten some really good feedback from y'all, some you know, just growing in subscriber count and, and likes and ratings and everything on the podcast. I appreciate that from you guys. Helps me out a ton when you, number one, subscribe, number two, review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening on, um, and then number three, just keep engaging with me on Twitter. You know, when I tweet out the podcast, or retweet, a like, commenting on it, uh, replying to the tweet, whatever it may be. I appreciate that from you guys. And to kind of say my thank you, I'm going to do a Q&A on today's All Things Mavs podcast. Now, if you're not following me on Twitter yet, at all underscore things underscore Mavs, personal accounts, Jimmy underscore Crowther. Uh, I am your host on this show. Thinking about having, I know I talked about having some guests on not too long ago. Uh, I think it was on the first podcast. I still want to do that. But again, I love getting to ramble here all by myself and Hopefully you guys like listening to me. Uh, the listener count hasn't dropped yet, so I guess I'm doing all right. But let's get into it. Uh, I had a bunch of questions roll in on Twitter and some roll in as well on Apple Podcasts. They asked me, uh, or some of y'all asked me some questions there. So I'm going to get to as many as possible without making this go too ridiculously long. Um, and we'll go from there. So let's start with out with this question from Charlie on Apple Podcasts. Yes, in hindsight, would it have made more sense to keep Harrison Barnes on the books for 19 to 20 million, keep his expiring contract, and honestly be a better fit for Luca and KP for this season before we send him on his way, along with Courtney Lee to have cap space for next season for three or for free agents or trades? Well, and then he finished that and said, "Love the podcast. Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate you listening. Um, it's a good question." And I think the All Things Mavs guys did a podcast completely dedicated to possibly keeping Harrison Barnes and what that would have looked like in hindsight. And I got to say, I'm I, I am at peace with not having Harrison Barnes on the books for another year. Number one, he probably would have opted out anyway because he did that with the Sacramento Kings. So there's no guarantee that it would have been a expiring deal. He could have opted out and then just, you know, gone right back. Um, so you can't really bank on that. And then number two, I, I didn't love his fit. I don't love the way he fits in Dallas. And um, look, good, good, good defensive player and a reliable scorer, but he truly is a ball stopper. Like if he gets the ball in his hands, um, you just don't know. Like, like he's just not going to look to move it. He's going to look to score, and that's the only thing he's going to look to do. I mean, look, there's two things you absolutely need next to Luka Doncic this next year. There's two things that we all want next to Luka Doncic this year. We want three-point shooting, we want guys that can play off the ball, and we want defensive ability. I mean, I mean, those are the three strongest things, I, I would guess, unless you guys have something else for me that I'm not mentioning, but I, I don't think uh, I'm forgetting anything there. And Harrison Barnes, yes, he's a good defender. He's an okay three-point shooter, but he doesn't play well without the ball. He, he just didn't. I, and for what we were paying him, he wasn't rebounding well in Dallas. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I'm I'm okay with not having Harrison Barnes. I I wouldn't I wouldn't say, I mean, would I have been upset if he were still on the books? No, I just think it it was well worth it. And you think about it. Let's say we keep Harrison Barnes, then our lineup is Brunson because Delon Wright's probably not going to be here. So you go Brunson, Luca, Barnes. Powell and KP, is that better than having a defensive stopper in DeLon Wright and a reliable forward in Justin Jackson? I don't think so. And also, you probably don't get Seth Curry. So who's your best three-point shooter on that team? Justin, Not even Justin. You don't have Justin Jackson. No, you don't have Justin Jackson uh, there. So, I mean, your best three-point shooter is Luka and Porzingis, obviously. So I'm okay with it. I think we got some good pieces to make up for the loss of Harrison Barnes. So that's that answer there, Charlie. On to this next one also with coming in from Apple Podcasts from uh, AP Drizzle. Hmm. Fun username. Says, why not trade Justin Jackson for some better assets or more picks? Well, I don't think we're going to get anything of equal value for Justin Jackson because I think, number one, I know the Dallas Mavericks love him. Like, they are super high on Justin Jackson. Number two, 
I think he's a valuable, valuable piece to this team. He's super young. He fits the timeline with Luka KP. Um, yeah, his contract is valuable. I think if you throw him in there, um, depending on what the deal is, you could get something good for him. But I'm excited about Justin Jackson. Now, was he a, is he a reliable three-point shooter? I wouldn't call him a knockdown yet, but I think if he's open, he's going to make them. He showed that in the All-Star, uh, post-All-Star. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the numbers on the defensive end when it comes to steals and blocks, but when you watch him play, he sticks whoever his assignment is. Really good wing defender. I like Justin Jackson. I'm excited about him on this team. I don't want to trade him uh, unless, you know, it's some out-of-the-park, you know, insane offer that we just can't turn down. So I'm high on Justin Jackson. That's why I wouldn't trade him, so... You can't really – I'm not going to trade him for picks. Absolutely not. Uh, Kane Fair asks – he says, great podcast, so thank you there. says, which player would have been the best fit for Dallas from this free agency? And which player do you want to target in next year's free agency? Um, so living in the past uh, of this past year's free agency, who would have been the best fit? I, I still think it would have either been one of the two Bucks guys in Brogdon or Middleton. Um, I But – I just don't know how realistic either of those guys were. I mean, obviously, Brogdon, or uh, what's his face, uh, Middleton wasn't because he signed an insane deal with the Bucks and he wasn't even really looking at uh, the, the Mavericks or any other team for that matter. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Malcolm Brogdon, would I have paid him what he, they got? Uh, yeah, absolutely. What he got from Indiana? Yeah, absolutely. But it was also a sign and trade, so it's like, you know, how would that be, you know, how would that have actually worked out? Um, so those probably would have been the two best fits. You know, I think we all would have been happy with Kimba. We all obviously would have been happy with Patrick Beverly. He would have been one of the best fits on a realistic scale. Um, you know, but was he ever, I don't, I don't think he was ever leaving the Clippers. You know, at the end of the day, the guys that we feel like we missed out on, quote unquote, did we really miss out on them? Like, because, and when I say that, I mean, yes, obviously we didn't get them, but did we really ever think we had an actual shot at any of them? Like, Kimball Walker, yeah, there was a ton of interest on our side. There was no report that ever came out that said Kimball Walker's interested in Dallas. Patrick Beverly, was he ever going to leave L.A.? I don't think so, and he definitely wouldn't have left L.A. if he waited and saw that Kawhi was going to sign there. Uh, Brogdon, you know, was a sign and trade realistic for us? I don't think so. Middleton obviously wasn't, wasn't in the books. Uh, in the cards, Danny Green was the only guy that we genuinely, genuinely had an actual shot at that we missed out on. So hindsight's twenty twenty, but that's uh, my take on this past year's free agency and guys that would have been good fits. Uh, and then which player do I want to target in next year's free agent class? So I'll give you a quick rundown uh, of the 2020 NBA free agents. Uh, top of the list, it's Anthony Davis, Pascal Siakam, Draymond Green, Karis LeVert, DeMar DeRozan, Jalen Brown, Brandon Ingram, Boogie Cousins again, Daniil Gallinari, Buddy Heald, Andre Drummond, Kyle Lowry, Eric Gordon, DeJounte Murray, DeMontis Sabonis, Gordon Hayward, Mark Gasol, Derek Favors, Millsap, and Bogdan Bogdanovich. I mean, that's your top 20. Uh, and then after that, significant drop-off, and it's like Marcus Morris, Dario Saric, mm, kind of eh, whatever, guys. So if I had to pick someone in the top 20, uh, you know, Draymond's getting older, but he's a – it would just be an insanely good fit, I think. Uh, no matter how you feel about him, I would take Draymond Green on this team. Jalen Brown is a dream, but he's a restricted free agent. Uh, Buddy Heald is another dream. He's a restricted free agent. Now, Andre Drummond has a player option, but uh, I've seen that he's kind of been slipping, so this is going to be a big year for him. We'll see how he does, but his rebounds would just be insane. Um, and then after that, you know – None of the top 20 really strike me as, ooh, I want them really bad, except Bogdan Bogdanovich. I'd really like him. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but next year's free agent class is not that strong. Obviously, I want Anthony Davis, but I don't expect him uh, to even consider Dallas for even a second. Pascal Siakam would be fun. I don't think he's going anywhere either. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that's that next year's free agent class. So those are a few of the podcast reviews that I wanted to get into. Again, if you want to rate the podcast five stars, and if you would like to comment on the podcast, leave a review, that would be super helpful for me. Um, definitely gets this uh, podcast some traction. So let's get into some of the replies. So I, I put out a, a video for Chat Sports, um, which has just been taken off lately. Um, some of the videos I've done over there, it's been a lot of fun. So if you're not subscribed to uh, YouTube, 
YouTube.com slash chat sports TV. Go do that. I do basketball videos all the time. They're, they're having me do a few more Mavs videos lately, which has been a lot of fun. So definitely check that out. But I did a Mavs Q&A for them, and I can only put so many questions on that show. And whatever I didn't answer on that show, I'm going to answer right here. So let's get into it. King Remy 96 says, who will take the leftover of the mid-level that Seth Curry has used? Where will Josh Reeves stay next season? So, uh, leftover of the MLE, I don't think we're going to be giving that to anybody. Uh, we don't have to use it all, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, there's not really anyone out there I'd want to give the mid-level exception to at this point uh, in free agency. So, wouldn't expect that to get used up. And where will Josh Reeves stay next season? Look, they obviously, the Mavs waived Jan, uh, Kostas Antetokounmpo. Uh, I'll get into that here in a little bit because that's just been, I mean, come on. He wasn't good. Uh, I think Josh Reeves at least deserves that two-way spot, that second two-way next to Daryl Macon. And I like Isaiah Roby a lot too. I, I would be totally happy with giving Isaiah Roby that 15th roster spot and just give him a chance. Uh, you know, we drafted him 45, right? 45. So like, just give him a shot. I, I say give him a shot. Um, Josh Reeves is going to be definitely 50-50 between uh, the Legends and the Mavs uh, if he does end up staying in Dallas and sticking around. I think he's really good. I loved seeing what I saw out of him in Summer League. Uh, so, Daniel. Ooh, Daniel, actually. Uh, so, at, M- at McCasland21, I think is how you say that. Uh, I actually answered Daniel's question on my video for Chat Sports. So, he asked how I see KP's numbers improving. Well, if you go over to Chat Sports, watch my video. You'll get the answer on that one. So, uh, Fat Boy, aka at Smoke underscore Pappy underscore Ian, says, "Is twenty five points and ten rebounds reasonable for a healthy Kristaps Porzingis?" I'll say twenty five points is because his numbers are going to be ridiculous playing with a f- pass first kind of guy. I guess you can call him pass first in Luka Doncic. I guess I should just say an incredible passer. 10 rebounds is a little up there. Uh, Historically, and historically speaking of his, what, two and a half years in the NBA, Porzingis has not had good, like great rebounding numbers for a seven foot three guy. But offensively, he's a good rebounder. So I I predict closer to, if I had to give a prediction for Porzingis' numbers, I would say 24 and seven. I think that's reasonable. I mean, think about it. You get seven boards from KP. uh, What? I'd say six or seven from Powell, six or seven from Luca. Justin Jackson's a pretty good rebounder, and DeLon Wright's a good rebounder. That's a pretty good rebounding lineup. It's an underrated re- rebounding lineup, if you ask me. So, I like it. And following that question, at Fat Kids, at Fat Kicks, UD, uh, asks, will Dallas be out rebounded in most games this season? Um, it's a little early to really say yes or no to that one, so we'll see. Chris Lopez asked me a question. Chris has always been engaging with me on Twitter. I appreciate that, at MavsManiac84 if you want to go follow him. But, Chris, I answered your question on Chat Sports. He asked how I see our center position being utilized. If you want to see my answer on that one, again, Chat Sports, I did a video for that as well. Uh, again, back to Fat Kicks. He asked, can Steph Curry, uh, Seth Curry, I believe is what he meant, shoot 40% from three this year? I'm going to say yes, because he's going to get a ridiculous amount of open looks. He's not going to be like the focal point of any defense when Porzingis and Luka are out there. And I think, you know, Seth Curry could be a crunch time lineup type guy. I think 40% is reasonable. Uh, I definitely think he can do that. I'm super excited for Seth, you know, his pick-and-roll ball handling is incredible. His three-point shot is obviously his bread and butter. And I, I truly believe when it comes down to, you know, two minutes left in the fourth quarter and we, we got to win a game, it's going to be he and DeLon Wright in the backcourt a lot of times. So, I like Seth. Do I think he can shoot 40% from three? Yeah, I don't think that's out of the uh, – out of – what's what's the word? Out of question, I guess. Uh, whatever. Uh, so, at Praneef Man asks – can we sign a player from another team's summer league, like how Cameron Payne got from the Raptors? Uh, yeah, we can, as long as they're not on a deal already, obviously. So, for example, Cameron Payne only signed a summer league contract with the Dallas Mavericks. Therefore, any team was available to sign him you know, by the end of summer league. Uh, I think that's how that, how that works. So as long as they don't have A, an Exhibit 10 contract, B, a two-way, or C, just a regular season contract with the team, then yeah, we can sign them from any Summer League team. I just don't think there's any players that played in Summer League now 
that haven't been picked up by now that deserve a contract with Dallas. And if you're thinking about Taco Fall, just stop thinking about Taco Fall. Because, look, I got to go out to Summer League. I got to watch the Celtics play a lot up close and personal. I got to watch Taco Fall play. And, uh, you know, in the 10 minutes he played, it was interesting. But he just, I mean, he's not. I, I just can't see him making it in the NBA by any means. So, yes, we can do that. Uh, but I don't, I don't think we will. Uh, again, from Kenneth, or Praneeth, sorry. I don't know why I said Kenneth. Where did I get that from? Uh, any more players coming to the Mavs? At least any rumors or ideas? Now, this is a, it's a very generic question because via trade, via free agency, via uh, our summer league team, the only name that's really been thrown out there that's realistic at this point uh, of big name kind of guys, quote unquote, Andre Iguodala is really the only one that's still out there that still makes sense that we could still make a move for. But other than that, I think our roster is basically set. I think we'll be buyers at the deadline. Uh, that's going to be more interesting to watch than the end of this offseason. So definitely pay close attention to the NBA trade deadline and who's like you know already getting on the move. You know, when it comes down to free agency, if there's guys you want to look at, let me let me look at the remaining remaining free agents uh, in 2020 because there's there's really just not a lot anymore. Uh, it's kind of, you know, I mean, what's his face? Justin Holiday just got signed, so he was probably the best one available at this point. Um, all right, hoops hype. I don't want your 2020 NBA free agents. I want your 2019 free agents. Thank you. There you are. Okay. So at the top of the list, they have Kenneth Fareed. Uh, Harrison Graham, who's on 103.3 at, uh, ESPN here in Dallas, and he works with me in chat sports, says the Mavs should take a swing on Kenneth Fareed. I say no because do you want him taking minutes away from – Maxi Kleba, no. Do you want him taking minutes away from uh, Dwight Powell? No. Do you want him taking minutes away from Porzingis? Obviously not. So I'm kind of out on Fareed. Uh, Jeremy Lin is available. That's a hard no. Uh, after that, like, there's really no big free agents remaining that the Mavs should show any interest in. Uh, there were some rumors, not really rumors, but there was some speculation among Mavs Nation that uh, Justin Anderson, a return, could be coming in the books. But... I don't think that's that's in the books at all. I don't think he'll make any kind of return. I, I, look, I love Justin Anderson. I think he was a lot of fun. He's a great bench guy. Obviously, a good locker room guy as well. But if we're being honest, I, I just don't think he would get any kind of minutes on this team. I, I, he's not going to play above Justin Jackson. He's not better than Dorian Finney-Smith. I would almost rather see a reliable three-point shooter in Brokoff play than Justin Anderson. So not really any new guys out there that make sense for the Mavs at this point uh, outside of Iguodala maybe, but I still don't see that getting done anytime soon. So Jack at Jack Gauby with a bunch of eyes at the end asks, most assumptions are that Hardaway is part of the second unit. Is there not a good fit for him in the first unit? Um. Now I've actually defended Tim Hardaway Jr. a lot. Not not necessarily just on this podcast, but on chat sports as well. And I defend him to the point that I think he can be a really good, productive player for the Dallas Mavericks. He's just not worth his contract, you know. But I do think there is a fit in the first unit, you know. If they want more shooting, if they want more scoring, if, if they, you know, need that, that's what Tim Hardaway is, and you can put him in at the starting two-guard two position. Uh, DeLon, Tim Hardaway, Luca, Porzingis, Dwight Powell. But then your defense is a huge question mark because your only real plus defenders are Porzingis and DeLon Wright, and Porzingis isn't going to defend super well on the perimeter most nights. So, you know, there is a fit, but you got to – I mean, that would require – a, an outstanding defensive year from Luka Doncic, just like ridiculously good. And Tim Hard, like Tim Hardaway, isn't just a terrible defender. His athleticism let, lets him make up for, you know, his lack of actual defensive ability. I just don't think he's a good fit in the starting unit. I, I just think he's a great, great off the bench guy. I think he would be so good in that six man role. You can run, you know, a total six man unit based around Tim Hardaway Jr. basically and Seth Curry. Uh, I think there's a later question coming up. We'll see. I, I'm actually just reading these off the top. I, I didn't even want to, you know, I'm just kind of winging it, just kind of talking about it as I go because it feels more natural than sitting down and like scripting something out about each of these questions. So I like Tim Hardaway. I just don't think in the starting unit it makes a lot of sense. I think that's why you've kind of seen him penciled in there in the second unit. Uh, the Mavs blog, at the Mavs blog, is this a, sounds like a, a new fan account. It is. 
um, asks, you get one player on the Mavs to make a wide open three to save your life. Who you got? It's a good one. Because in crunch time, like if it were like a last second shot, I'd pick Luka Doncic. But if it were a wide open, empty gym three-pointer, I think I'm going to go Ryan Brokoff. Call me crazy. Ryan Brokoff, Seth Curry, Porzingis. Those are your my easy top three. And I think I'd go Brokoff one, Porzingis two, Seth Curry three. That's my answer for you there, Mavs blog. He also asks, another one. You get to pick one player, not including Dirk, that has played on the Mavs in the past five years to bring back. Who you got? Uh, so going back to 2014-15, because that roster, man, that was a lo- it was almost a lot of fun before uh, Rondo came in and screwed everything up. I got to go Monte Ellis. I don't think there'd be many people that disagree with me on that one. I think I'd go Monte. Uh, Tyson Chandler also, obviously, that year was a lot of fun. But um, and, and I'm talking about, you know, in that time period. Like, I wouldn't bring back Monte Ellis right now uh, or Tyson Chandler as he is right now. I'm talking about five years ago, give me Monte. Five years ago, give me a Tyson type guy. Um, that's a good question. It's fun, though. Uh, Chris Stapp, 1722, he asked the question, but I also answered that one on my last video, so make sure you go check that out for sure. Uh, Blake Jackson, at Blake Jackson, asks, are we going to make a midseason trade? If we do, what would be your dream player to get that's realistic? And after that trade, what would the starting lineup be in the playoff run? Wow, it's a loaded question. So let me try to answer it as best I can here. Um, I, I don't know if I'd say a big midseason trade, you know, it's obviously not going to be a Porzingis level trade. That was probably the, besides Rondo, like Rondo at the time was big, um, but that was by far one of the biggest trades we've ever made in the middle of the season. And I don't think we're going to do something crazy that completely shakes up what we want to do, but I do think there's opportunity for us to go out and get someone that's really good. For example, I think Danilo Gallinari is going to be a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder um, un- you know, up until the trade deadline. And by then... I think they'll be ready to move on from him because, like, you know, they're not going to be competitive at all. So I like the idea of Daniil Gallinari in that lineup, and I think you could either play him, again, that could be an off-the-bench type guy, or if you if you believe in the fit at power forward alongside Porzingis, that makes sense. He's way too big to play the small forward, even though I think you could make it work technically. But, man, you go Luka, Daniil Gallinari, Porzingis – uh, with DeLon Wright and uh, I, I guess throw out, oh, man, that's tough. Probably Justin Jackson again or Dorian Finney-Smith potentially. I think you might have to give up Jackson to get Daniel Gallinari. We'd see. Um, that would be a fun crunch time, fun playoff run lineup. Uh, another guy that I'm, I'm probably going to do a whole podcast on here soon, Blake Griffin. If, if the Pistons are kind of like, okay, we're not going to win anything and they're ready to move on from Blake Griffin. Obviously, that would be a dream come true because he's an absolute star. Other than that, let me think. There's not really anyone that comes to mind. Steven Adams, anyone the Oklahoma City Thunder are selling, you know, of those two, Daniil Gallinari or Steven Adams, I would take either one. Um, I get there's question marks about Adams' fit necessarily or, you know, next to Porzingis or whatever it may be, but I, I believe in it. I would take him for sure. So those are three names that I think are somewhat realistic. Uh because he asked what would be your dream player to get that's realistic and dream and realistic are very, very different things. But uh, that's that. And then, you know, he asked what the starting lineup would be in the playoff run. So let's say we get, I'll, I'll go through those three. If you get Steven Adams, pretty obvious. It's DeLon Wright, uh, Luka Doncic, probably Finney Smith, because I think you'd have to give up Justin Jackson, um, Gallinari and Porzingis. If it's, was that was that the Steven Adams or Daniel Gallinari? Whoever that was. Anyway, let's say it's now let's say it's Steven Adams. It's basically the same lineup, except Steven Adams is in there next to Porzingis, and you go DeLon Wright, Seth Curry, maybe, Luca, Porzingis, Steven Adams. That'd be a lot of fun. If it's Blake Griffin, that's where things get interesting. Because Griffin could technically play the three, but he's obviously more of a four. Um, and so I think you gotta just figure out Porzingis and him in the same front court. I think you just gotta do it. Um, and run with, again, DeLon Wright, Luka Doncic, Porzingis, Blake Griffin, and I, you know, go ahead and throw, like, Seth Curry out there. That'd be fun. I'm for it. 
William Gonzalez asks, how can the Mavs rebrand? Uh, he's got a bunch of questions in one tweet, so we'll go one by one. How can the Mavs rebrand? Go uh, go follow Tyler Upchurch and let Tyler Upchurch rebrand your entire jersey design because he is the man. He's absolutely ridiculous. Even though he went to Oklahoma, I'll forgive him. I'm an Oklahoma State Cowboy, so I'll forgive Tyler on that one. He asked, will we run Luka at the point guard? You know, he's not going to defend point guards, but Luke is going to have the ball in his hands, you know, 90% of the possessions, like going down the court. He's going to be running the offense for sure. Says, how can our second unit keep up? Uh, I love our second unit. I, I love what our second unit is. It's, uh, you know, not not in the lineup wise, but you have off the bench most nights, Seth Curry, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleba, Boban Marjanovic, um, who am I forgetting in that second unit? Uh, JJ's coming back, obviously, at some point. I'm super excited for the bench. I think it's going to be a good, good underrated bench lineup uh, for sure. So I like them. And then who is to blame for the Mavs' very conservative free agent practices? Look, I don't think there's any particular person you can blame. I, I think it's disappointing what happened this past summer. Uh, I wouldn't call it conservative, though. I, I don't think that's what it was at all. So I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just blaming a tough free agent market because that's what it was. So, And then he asked, can we develop Maxi and – oh, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson's a part of that second unit too, I forgot. Uh, can we develop Maxi Brunson to be starters? You know, I think both of them are starting caliber players, and it'll depend on the matchups. I just don't think there are best, there are best options to, to start when it comes down to fit. But Jalen Brunson, man, you know, I, I love him a lot. It might be – you know, quickly becoming one of my favorite players on this team, even though I think he is, I like him in the second unit because he has the freedom to run the offense. And that's what you want Jalen Brunson to be able to do. So excited about him. John asks, are they going to, are the Mavs going to do a rebrand for the post era, post Dirk era? And yeah, they are, they're planning on it. Uh, Cuban even said that a while back that once Dirk retires, they're planning a rebrand, but a rebrand takes a couple years. It just doesn't happen right away. So, I'd expect that to come within the next two, three years. So uh, we'll see what they do. Austin Speck asks, what do you think of the idea of Mavs giving a training camp invite to Monte Ellis? It's ironic that I mentioned him a little bit earlier. You know, for the memories, it would be fun. And obviously by his highlights that I saw in like the, uh, you know, whatever his training camp or like mini camp kind of thing it was, he can obviously still play. But is, is he worth taking a roster spot? And is he worth taking time away from other guards and wings that we already have? I don't know. I think for the memories and for the nostalgia of Monte Ellis, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I just don't think they will. I don't think they should. Stitch asks, do you think DeLon will be as effective against Westbrook as he was with Memphis? Um, I'm actually not 100% sure what he's referring to. I'm assuming that he defended Westbrook really well in a couple games. I, I didn't get to see him, I guess. But I, hopefully, because Westbrook's going to be one of the best guards in the Western Conference next year, and DeLon Wright's going to have to figure out a way to slow him down if he's not guarding James Harden. Like that night, the night we play the Rockets, it's going to be kind of scary to see who defends who, but it's going to be even more scary for the Rockets to decide who's going to defend Luka and who's going to defend Chris Alps Porzingis. So have fun with that, Rockets. Uh, good luck. All right, we only got a few more here, so I kind of want to power through these. But Jack asks, Maz fans think we can get Beal. Need to understand that the only way is if we take Wall with him. So would you swallow that contract to add Bradley Beal to the Luka KP pairing? Jack, that's a good question. I haven't really thought of that. Um, I thought about Bradley Beal. I haven't thought about having to take both of them on, or I guess taking on John Wall in return. <laughs> You know, if we're dumping Lee and Hardaway, which I guess we would have to do, I, I'd have to do the math and have to put it in to see how the money works out. But I just don't know what all we'd have to give up. Obviously, we'd probably have to give up Brunson because he's probably our most valuable tra trade asset. It'd be tough, but I think I would do it. I, I think I would take on, you know, outside of looking at what we'd have to give up because I'd have to look at that before I say yes or no to a deal. I'd have to look at, look at what we'd have to give up, but... Overall, yeah, I think I would take on John Wall to get to get Bradley Beal. Bryce Ellis asks, "Who? What? Or what is the question? No, I misread that. Anyway, why haven't we looked into a better center? I, 
what, what what better option do you want out there? You know, there's just nothing available right now that I, that's just like, hey, yeah, Mavs can go get that guy. It does, you know, that's just not not a thing. So, and Dwight Powell is, or you know, I like him a lot, and Maxi Kleba's in there, and Boban will be fun uh, at times, and Porzingis can be a play, play center at times too. So, you know, I, I'm not really worried about our center position all that much. Best and worst case scenario this season. This is also coming from Bryce. Best case. I think our ceiling is like a seven, six, seven. I'd say six or seven seed. Um, and that comes when everybody's healthy and everything like that. So six, seven seed for the Mavs and sneak off a great first round victory. Worst case scenario, finish like 10. I don't think we finish below 10 and we end up right back in the lottery. I don't want to be in the lottery again. I want to make the playoffs. He says, what's T- uh, Tim Hardaway Jr.'s issue? Uh, he had surgery. I'm assuming that's what he's referring to. So, yeah, he had surgery. But he'll be back. He'll be ready to play in the start of the season. Uh, he says he's not sold on DeLon Wright as our starting point guard. And he asks what his ceiling is. I would be sold because his defensive potential is incredible. He's a great defensive player, and he can finish around the rim. If he can get a reliable jump shot, like let's say he shoots 33% from three, I think that's a win, and I think that's more than enough. So I'm excited about him. Uh, Jacob Sanchez asks, "Do you think Jalen Brunson has enough upside to eventually become the starter?" Yes, his. But again, I think his best option is to play in the second unit where he has the freedom to run the offense. So, yes, he has enough upside, but he's better suited as that second unit point guard. Gilbert asks, "I uh, asked about the second unit. I've kind of already gone through that." So. I like this second unit a lot. And then Wags asks, at JBCHRI1, he asks, who is going to be the Mavericks heel in 2019? Is it going to be Pal, JJ, Tim Hardaway Jr., or Boban? Um, that's a good question. Who's going to be our biggest heel? Achilles heel, obviously. Um, I don't think it's JJ Barea because I think he'll play sparing minutes. I don't think he'll play that often. I don't think it's Tim Hardaway Jr. because I don't, I also don't think Rick Carlisle is just gonna you know be dead set on playing him if he hasn't been effective. Like he he he'll be more than willing to pull him out. So I'm not really worried about Tim Hardaway. Is it gonna be Boban? No, because again he's another guy that's not gonna play enough to be an Achilles heel. Now Dwight Powell is an interesting one because we've seen Dwight Powell have really bad nights where it's just so frustrating to watch him play. So he can, he's going to have his up and ups and his downs for sure. I think our biggest Achilles heel uh, is quite literally going to be injuries. If I don't think it's actually going to happen. I'm not predicting it to happen. But I think I think injuries are more the problem than the actual players themselves. Like, if Porzingis is hurt, we're, we're done. You know, if Luka Doncic can't, you know, if he, if he keeps suffering all those bumps and bruises that he had to go through last season, that's a big question mark for me. Uh... You know, so definitely got to stay healthy. Seth Curry was has been healthy since that weird injury that he had in Dallas a couple years ago. Um, but if that per- persists, then that's a problem. So injuries more than a player is going to be the biggest Achilles heel in Dallas for 2019, this next season. I'm super excited to get the season underway. I'm tired of watching YouTube videos of highlights and uh, just being on Twitter all day, every day, waiting for some news or waiting to see what Luka Doncic or Porzingis tweet about. So... I'm ready to get the season going, guys. I hope I answered all of your questions. Uh, you know, if we want more, if we want another Q&A, let me know, and I'll get another Q&A going as soon as freaking possible because I love interacting with you guys here on All Things Maps. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're commenting, everything like that. Thank you, guys, and we'll talk soon. Yeah.